Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Cam Small, and in today's episode, we are talking about blocking and dodging. So, how does both of the mechanics work, and most importantly, when to utilize them? And what we are doing is we will talk about the facts and what those mechanics do exactly. Then we are going a little bit more into details on how to utilize those mechanics. Then we do a little bit of theory crafting, and then we talk about the when to use blocking, when to use dodging. So first things first, how do those mechanics work? Well, they're pretty simple, really. When you want to block, you're just holding up your melee weapon, and then you're blocking all the incoming damage coming from the front till your stamina is depleted, and then you are starting to get damage. You can also shove the enemy, right, to push them back a little bit. You can do a follow-up attack. Most people, me included, screw up and don't utilize at all, so we will not really talk about that. And that's basically you have to know about blocking, and blocking is only blocking the melee attacks. They are not blocking any of the bullets. Yes, I know, some of the psychers are already, haha, yes, I know, psyker plus four sword allows you to actually block incoming bullets. I'm aware of that. And the same goes with the Ogryn, and when they have their riot shield, right, they can use the riot shield for more than just melee attacks. But I would just talk about the normal block here, and not about the specials those two classes have. So there's blocking. It's pretty straightforward. There's not much to learn, right? And you already know what's going on. Now let's talk about dodging, because dodging at first glance looks pretty simple till you are going a little bit more deeper into the whole mechanic and then you realize, oh gosh, wow, this is much more complicated than I have thought. So first things first, what does dodging do? Well, exactly that. You are dodging to the side or you're dodging backwards. You cannot dodge forward, by the way. And that's really how the mechanic works at first glance. Now, there are a few details we have to discuss. First things first, other than blocking, dodging is not taking away from your stamina, right? Right. But it has a mechanic which limits you on how often you can dodge. You have basically dodge stacks. So you have a certain amount of stacks which you can utilize to dodge till you then have to wait till those stacks are regenerated and you can start to dodge again. And if you're like, okay, uh, how many stacks do I have? Because the game is not telling me. No, unfortunately, the game is not telling you in the interface. You have to know it. And it depends really on the weapon you have equipped. So the best way on how to check is is you are going to your weapons, like the chainsaw here, and then you do inspect, and then you will see the dodge limit. So the chainsaw has four dodges. I can four, dodge four times before my character is doing an awkward jump, and I can show you that very quickly. It's um, just like that, and now I'm jumping. When you're starting to jump instead of to dodge, you know you have reached your dodge limit in the game. Um, try just to remember the amount of dodges because, as I said, you probably don't want to jump instead of dodge because that will hurt. But every weapon has different dodge limits. If I'm going to, let's say, my axe and go into expect, I have actually five dodge limits. So the axe has even more. And most of the time, not always, but most of the time, range weapons have less dodging limits, like the braced autogun has only two dodging limits. So that is much less. Uh, smaller weapons have more, like the revolver. The revolver will give you four, so you can dodge four times. And so you have to decide like how often you want to dodge. Right, depending on the class, depending on your playstyle, you want more dodging or you want less. But the best way how to look at it, dodge limit is the best with melee weapons. Again, some weapons are better than others and the heavier they get, the more problematic it gets with the dodging and so on and so forth. So there are some exceptions of this rule, but the best way to dodge is with your melee weapon. Now, the next thing you've probably already noticed is the dodge distance. 
As you can see here, the stop revolver is removing the dodge distance by 6.45%, which is not that much. If we are looking at the bolter though, well, there will be a nasty surprise because now the dodge distance is minus 27.5. Depending on the bolter, uh, there's another bolter I have where it's only, only 24%, but that is still pretty egregious and you might not want to use this for dodging. It's like, more like an emergency dodge. So melee weapons are also great because you have a bigger range. Also, which is really interesting, is that the game is not telling you that through stats. You have to figure it out yourself. But the faster you dodge one after another, the, well, the shorter the distance becomes. Let me show you this. So this is when I would normally dodge, right? Pretty normal, nothing nothing too crazy about it. But the moment you do a lot of fast dodges, like you see that the character will slow down, especially with the later dodges. Uh, we have to wait a little bit till the dodges regenerate and then we can continue this. Like you can see it a bit how the, the last dodge right, was super slow, and I didn't dodge that far. It's it's a slight thing, right, but you notice it if you were, like, too fast. And then it slows down. So, the next question you probably have is, okay, how quickly do I get my dodge charges back? Thankfully, Fat Shark has now normalized the whole thing, so every class has now the same reach charge time, and they've changed it again with the release patch they did some they tried something in the beta and in the, the pre-order beta if you have played that but they basically said nah you know what let's go back to the normal one let's just leave it as it is right now and right now to get one dodge charge back it would take 0 0.85 seconds to get a charge back and yes those 0 0.85 seconds always regenerate Always. You don't have to wait till all your charges are depleted. It will always give you a new charge every 0 0.85 seconds. So now you know some of the stats and you know that you have to take a look at your weapons to exactly know which is good for dodging and whatnot. But there is one last thing we have to talk about. And this is purely theory crafting. There is no uh, confirmation by the developers, even though I have requested one. And I've also talked to other content creators. I've talked to some streamers. I've watched some streams. And I have been trying to figure this out because it's driving me crazy. But there are moments where I have the feeling that Dark Tide might have iframes. What is iframe? Well, it's not a new hardware by Apple. It is invincible frames. So a lot of video games are using invincible frames to basically give you a little bit of a breather. If you want to see invincible frames in action and you want to spot them very easily, just play any of the Souls games or even Elden Ring and they're using invincible frames on everything where you can dodge. It's, it's kind of crazy. You spot it very easily. Now, I was starting to try to see if Dark Tide actually is giving you any invincible frames. And... It's hard to tell, really. There were definitely moments where I should have got hit or got hit by those attacks, especially those dudes here, the big ogrins with their hammers. Like, when they hit you, I had some moments where they basically crushed my face in, but I dodged in the last millisecond, and then I didn't get hit. So I was pretty sure I saw iframes, but then there were also some moments where I had the feeling I dodged through the attack and I still got hit. So it's it's really hard to tell. I know, I know that some people are already going to the comments to point this out, but Mo, oh, there have been no iframes in Vermintide. Yes, I'm aware of that. I'm very much aware of that, but that doesn't mean things cannot change to the next game, right? And again, I've talked to some other content creators and they were like, yeah, I'm not sure about this. So I cannot tell you if they are iframes or not. I'm definitely playing as if there are not any iframes in the game. 
I'm definitely playing that way, so I'm not trying to rely on it. But again, there were definitely some moments where some of the bigger enemies should have hit me and they didn't. Maybe it's the hitbox, maybe it isn't iframes and your hitbox is just super small with a normal character and they give you a lot of leniency. But again, I cannot confirm nor deny if there are iframes in the game or not. I, I would love to see a confirmation by Fat Shark where they're just coming out right and say, hey, there are no iframes in our game or hey, there are iframes in our game. But they haven't done that yet. I requested some answer on that. I haven't heard back from them yet. And we have to see. I will keep it posted. Or maybe you know something or maybe you have figured something out. Definitely let me know down below in the comments. So now to answer the biggest question. When to use blocking and when to use dodging. Well, I have some bad news for you. There is no 100% right decision on when to use blocking or dodging in most circumstances. There are some exceptions of those rules, but in most circumstances, you have basically to figure out what's right for you. And I'm always handle it this way. Dodging is never a bad decision Whereas blocking is a specific decision. So what does that mean? Well, most of the time I do dodging. I'm playing also a character which is pretty good with dodging, right? So I'm dodging as much as possible. But dodging always seems to be the right call no matter what. Because... There is a pretty high chance that you would dodge the attack or even if you are getting hit, you're not getting hit by too many attacks or you position yourself better. Like dodging is like this universal right choice. Even if it is a bad choice in this moment and you should have blocked, it's still better than doing nothing. So if you are just deciding to dodge whenever possible, you do the right thing, right? Um, and there are definitely some attacks you cannot even block. Like when some of the net throwers is throwing a net at you. You can dodge that in the last second. Or you have those heavy attack dudes attacking you. You can dodge in the last second. right? Uh, the same goes with the mutants when they're charging at you. Even the dogs. Uh, they unfortunately remove the ability that you can push back the dogs when they're jumping at you. Uh, they fix that with a patch which is really unfortunate because i found that pretty cool but again like most of the attacks which are targeted at you directly you can dodge you can even dodge a sniper shot if you have a sniper and you hear this shot loading up you can just dodge to the side and the sniper will not hit you like you can mostly dodge everything in this game and this is why i always say dodging is not necessarily a bad choice but there is something more. Now the question is, of course, when do you do the blocking? And the answer is, if you need extra health. Because the stamina is basically acting as extra health on top of what you have while you are blocking. So if you are surrounded by a lot of enemies, like a horde, blocking can be an absolute life server. Because sometimes, even if you dodge, you are dodging into the next horde. Right? So blocking is definitely the answer there. Or even if you are dodging and you just realize, well, shoot, this guy will now hit me. Raise your weapon. Raise your weapon. Like, take a little bit away of the damage which is coming in and just do that even after you did a bad dodge. The next thing is uh, the demon host, which I cannot show you here right now but the demon host is a wonderful example because the demon host is sticking at you the whole time you can really dodge the attacks and the only chance you really have is to block as much damage as possible and hope that your team is hopefully taking care of it right so blocking is definitely the right decision there and you you have to learn on when to do what another another character by the way which is really good for blocking is the rager if you have a rager on you and you're trying to like dodge backwards or dodge sidewards, most of the time the rager can stick to you and still beats the shit out of you. 
So blocking is the better choice there. Then you can push them and hopefully take them down or your team is uh, close by and has taken them down for you. But again, dodging against those dudes, not really feasible because they stick to you. Everything which can basically stick to you while you are dodging is definitely a block decision you want to make. But beyond that, you have to learn the rest. Like you have to learn on where you were at at the map, where can you dodge to, where's your teams. Like there's a lot of situational awareness to when to block and when to dodge. It's as simple as that, actually. But yeah, with that said, we are done with the dodging and blocking video. If you have any questions, please let me know down below the comments. Also, uh, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you leave a like on your way out. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more warm and 40k dark tide videos, we're also streaming here on YouTube on the same channel every day. Well, nearly every day from Monday to Friday, starting at 8 a.m. East Coast time. That is 1 p.m. UK time and 2 p.m. Central European time. And you can join us there. If you want to stop by and say hi, we are playing a lot of Warmer 40k Dark Tide. Uh, we are also checking out very soon the Warmer 40k Rogue Trader Alpha, the new CRPG from our cat, on the 7th of December. Really looking forward to that one. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. And don't forget, the Emperor protects. Bye-bye.